Hi all. Long time no see. I'm obviously not getting any better at this videoing on a regular schedule because the last one I did was June 2nd. I did not realize that it had been that long. It's almost four months. I'm sorry, but I'm back. I'm back. And we have finishes, plural. We have whips and we have a whole lot of stash because it's been almost four months. So I think that's, that's gonna be it. I don't think it'll take a super long time. So get your stitching out or a beverage or both and uh, let's spend a little time here. What do you say? Hmm? We will start with our two finishes. One is a regular finish, the other is an FFO. So I think it was in August. There was the thing on Facebook where you, um, the challenge to stitch for 24 hours over a 48 hour period. So I tried that. I made 16 hours, so that's not bad for me. I'll I'll try to do better next time. I think the next one's coming up next month. And this is what I did. I got, in 16 hours, I got a finish. Isn't that cute? I have one of the um, larger Home of a Needlework pieces, but I like this little one. I'm going to finish it and put it like in a, a little frame and then set it on with one of those god i don't have any words today i don't even remember what i'm gonna say anyway i'm gonna do it in a frame and then i'm going to put it up in my office in my stitchy room or as Carolyn Mazio calls it, the room of creation, which I I love that. I think I may steal that from Carolyn. So I have that. My other one is my FFO Bullwinkle. Ugh. Oops. Oh, sorry about the glare, people. Oh, that's horrible. But anyway. See what my framer extraordinaire did? He painted those lights onto the mat so they match the ones in the middle. Isn't that so cool? He is just a wonderful guy. I love Bullwinkle so much, but he's promised to another. I may have to do another one. I kept all of I kept the pattern. I did look. It took me a total of 42 days to stitch him. You know, when some days are better than others, time-wise, but 42 days, so about a month and a half. Darn glare. Shoot. But I love him. He was fun to stitch. And I wasn't able to get the that's supposed to have the the smoke coming out of the top of the houses out of the chimneys could not get that to look decent so i just left it off and i'm still happy with it so those are my finishes whips i went back and i looked since june 2nd to see what i had worked on and i surprised myself because there was a couple I'd completely forgotten I'd worked on. So we'll just go through all of these. Um, here's a blast from the past. If you have been watching me for any length of time, this was the first Heaven and Earth design that I bought and the first one that I started. And I actually took it back out and worked on it a little bit in June. 
And so I don't have a lot done, but I finished, I did about a page and a half over here. And I still do love it, being in Arizona and all. So this will get some more love. I, I completely forgot that I had worked on this one. That's why I keep a little book. I keep track every day. I don't keep track of my hours because I'm always just up and down and up and down. But I keep track of my days. And that works really, really well for me. I worked on that for 15 days. And I, I think it was about a page and a half that I got done. Then I had a new start. And I do not have a picture of this one. I could not find a picture in all of my stuff. Next time I'll print out a picture. And this is another Chatelaine because, you know, that's what I do. And this is White Nights in St. Petersburg. And I got a little tip I want to share with you on this one. This has been so so fun to work on. And looking at my back, man, my back looks good. I'm not gonna show it, but I'm really quite proud of that. Mine don't usually look good. So the thing is, I had it, I, was, I put it on my almanac stand frame and what did I do here? It was all wonky. It was wonky on the, on the frame. And I played with it and I couldn't figure out why the fabric was just kind of tilted just a little bit like that. So what I did, and I had found this, somebody else had done this, so I decided to try it. At the bottom, and I should have done it in a lighter color because you can't see, at the bottom, I went through with just a piece of sewing thread or a piece of DMC. Can you see the, where is it? Right there, see that little green line? I just basted that all the way across. And so it's a, it's a straight line. And then I could use that as a guide when I'm putting in, putting it in the frame. And it worked great. I only had to do the bottom. Is that the bottom? Yeah, the bottom. Um, but you could do it on both sides. If you're having trouble getting your fabric in straight, I would recommend this. So you just, just with a needle and any kind of thread and just baste it just a running stitch all the way across. And um, it, got, it got it all straightened out. So my fabric is not wonky anymore. This I worked on, I was obsessed with this for quite a while. I worked on this for A little over a month, 38 days. So it took me that long, which I don't think is bad for a Chatelaine. A lot of color changes. Still needs to do some back stitching in this area, but I'm trying to do it as I go along because otherwise it's really difficult. So I worked on that for a little bit over a month. What's next? Then I did the little home of a needle worker and that was three days. And then I started working on my Miss Mid Christmas again. Man, that gray is killer, but it looks so good. So this is where we are. I had, I had some major, major futzing to do with it. 
Um, I made the mistake of doing his nose before I got down that far with the red and his nose was off, way off. Um, so it took me, what did I work on this? I didn't write it down. Oh, 15 days. It took me 15 days to get it where I'm happy with it and everything will be in order from now on. So that's good. He's gonna be so cute when he's done. But yeah, this, I did not know there were so many shades of gray in DMC. I, I, sh I should count. Next time I will count how many shades there are. The red doesn't seem to be as bad. But actually, some of that red is actually blue. And some of it is purple. I'm enjoying him. Now that I've got him all straightened out. And I love the look. So we will just keep on trucking with him. I don't know that I'll get him done this year because I have other priorities, but we'll see. We, will sh we shall see. Then, uh, oh, I've got two, two left. I'm gonna do this one first. This is what I've been working on just recently, is Chatelaine's Sleeping Beauty's Castle. And it goes like this. I'm gonna stand up so you can see it. So I've worked on this for about two weeks. I'm working over here. I did the uh, the gate and I've done all of the confetti from like here down and that's taken me like two weeks to do and there's a bunch of back stitching in here that and beads that you can't see on this but they represent vines and little green flowers and stuff so I'm gonna work on this until the end of the month I believe I'm going to work on this pond here, and then maybe start, if I have time, start working down here for some more of that confetti. It's gonna be awesome when it's done. It's gonna take a while. And uh, I've discovered that using the parking method for this part of the confetti, for this part, the sides and the bottom too will also works really well. This is um, this is the picture of it. So I'm I'm working on this side right now, and then this side is more more of the green and the vines and flowers, and then this side basically has none of the castle left, and it's all green and pink flowers, and it has a bunch of Algerian eyelet flowers in there too. So it's a challenge and it takes a lot of time, but it's not horrendously hard. Um, I know people really freak out about the specialty stitches on these, and there's really no need to because you can, you know, there's YouTube, there's the Chatelaine support group, there's practice fabric. I practiced a bunch of these before I actually put them on here. And I think that that's really the best way to learn. Um, so you don't get frustrated if it doesn't look like you want it to look on your piece. You can, you can play with it on another piece of fabric. That's, that would be my recommendation for what it's worth. I have a new start, which you've probably seen. We have a little stitch along going. Everybody's welcome to join to do the project or to just watch us in our craziness. But we are doing 101 alphabets 
by Rosewood Manor, Karen Kluba. It is gonna be fabulous. I worked on this for like, what, two weeks? Yeah, almost two weeks, 13 days. I was not, I pulled all the DMC. I had it all kitted up with DMC. I wanted it a little bit brighter and I wasn't crazy personally about the coverage that I was getting because I'm doing it on 32 count. Uh, one strand of DMC was not enough for me personally. Two strands was too much. So I am doing it in sulky threads, one strand, and they're wonderful. So what I did, I did some test stitching. Let me just show you. If I can remember, the bottom is one strand of DMC. Let me bring this closer. The next one is two strands of DMC. And the top one is one strand of the Sulky. I really like the coverage I'm getting on it. Uh, and I love the colors. They're, um, and I bought these little containers. At the, is the container store like the best store ever? So I got them all, and I just marked the top of them with the symbols, and they all just sit here when the kitty doesn't get at them. But he's been pretty good about these. Oh, we have a story, too. Yeah, we have a kitty story, but we'll do that after this. So, 101 alphabets. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven done, I think. Yeah, the fabric is 32 count and it is 36 inches wide and 36 inches long. And I have about a two inch border on each side. So let me just take it. This is really hard to do because I can't see what you're seeing, but all of, I love alphabets. I love doing alphabets, and this is going to be so awesome when it's done. How many times have I said awesome today? I'm not going to frame it because that would be like horrendous, horrendous. What I'm planning on doing is putting a, making it kind of a quilt, putting a fabric backing on the back, and then put putting tabs on the, <clears throat> excuse me, top, so I can hang it like a quilt on the wall. And I think that that will just be beautiful. And if you have, if you have a chance, try this sulky thread. This is sulky and it's what, 12, what does they say it is? 12 weight. It's, they say it's equivalent of two strands of DMC. And it's not, it's one and a half, basically. But try it. They've got some, their colors are beautiful. Their variegated threads are amazing, amazing. Look at this one, look at that. Isn't that pretty? You can buy small sets. I think Joanne's, yeah, Joanne sells them. Or you can buy them individually if you want to just buy two or three to try them. But I love them. They're really nice. So that's what I've been working on. I've been busy. So let's go over the um, Mr. Whiskers story. As you all know, I have a my own little stitching room here. And you can see that I have doors on the room. 
I always keep the doors closed at night because he has free reign of the house. And I always close them when I'm away from the house. But during the day, when I'm 90% of my time is, I mean, here. But if I'm in the kitchen or I'm doing laundry or something, I leave the door open. So one day I was doing some stuff in the kitchen and then I was going to sit down, watch, I think it was football and do some stitching. So I had everything all set up on my frame and my stand. I had my threads all threaded. The needle was there. It was on a needle minder and I was all set. So all I had to do was sit down and I finished my chores came in, sat down, and the thread and the needle and thread were gone. And I couldn't find him. I searched everywhere. And I thought, oh my God, I got to find him. And I thought, he's probably eaten them. Maybe, he, he, oh God. So it was, oh, it was a Friday. So I called my vet, who's luckily only about two miles away at noontime, bring him in, bring him in, we'll do an x-ray. And they're like, oh, he, you know, it's probably just like under your chair or something, but we'll, we'll check it. You can see it in the x-ray, bigger than you know what. So the vet that was on duty, because it was Friday afternoon, they only have one vet on, on duty at my place. She said, well, I can try doing an endoscopy through through his mouth. I can try, but I'm booked the whole afternoon. I'd have to wait until after five. I can try it. She didn't seem real confident that it was going to work, or at least she was honest about it. It didn't seem like she was real confident in her ability to do it. So they sent me up to Tucson to this special 24 hour a day, 365 days a year place that have surgeons, you know, all the equipment and operating rooms all right there. An hour, an hour drive up there, he's crying the whole time, but I don't think he was in any pain. It was in his stomach. So we brought, I brought him into there they took another x-ray to make sure it hadn't moved and it hadn't luckily because if it got into his intestines that's really bad because it had the thread on it too so what they were able to do they put him out completely and they did an endoscopy through his mouth and were able to get it out i just handed him my american express card but what are you going to do? You got to do it. Man, I felt so, I still feel guilty. So the doors are staying closed pretty much all the time now, except when I'm in here. And he still tries to go after my threads. We need a little more training. But I want to thank those vets. Oh, they were wonderful. They said, "We're this is what we're going to do. And if it doesn't work, then we'll try something else and they got it on the first try. They knew what they were doing. I was so relieved. I did not need something to happen to him, boy. So please take care of your needles and your threads if you have pets, please. I don't want anybody else to go through what I and Mr. Whiskers went through. It was traumatic for both of us. He, uh, I brought him home the same day. They waited until he could walk a little bit. He was very wobbly. I wish I had taken a video, but I was feel I felt so sorry for him. I didn't. He was very wobbly for about twenty four hours, but he's all back to his normal troublemaking self now. So. All I have left is haul. Okay, let's see what we can get through here. I'm, and these I bought all over the place, so they're in no order. 
I just, I, oh, I have two gifts, so I want to show first. Um, a couple, I went to the New Jersey retreat, and I'm not going to do a whole lot. I'm not going to do anything on that because everybody's done it, and it's old now. But two of the ladies that I met there um, have sent me patterns, which is so sweet. They're lovely people. Um, first, this one. Isn't that pretty? Because I have a dough bowl that I need to fill up. These will be really good for that. And then this one. This lady, and I'm not going to mention their names because I didn't ask them if it was okay. But she sent me this. Look at that. She found, it, it found this thing at a Goodwill store. And it's got all these specialty stitches, most of which I've never even heard of. And it, it, it has... It has fabric and all the thread, specialty threads and everything. Look at the price. It was originally $75. I do not know what she paid for it at Goodwill, but I know it wasn't $75. But anyway, both of you, you know who you are. Thank you so much. I'm going to stitch both of these. Maybe I'll try to get this one done for next year's New Jersey. Hmm? Yeah. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. All right. Let's go through the rest of these real quick. Um, this was one that Nicola Parkman had talked about um, when she was here giving classes. So I tracked it down at the attic. Took them a while to get it to me, but it's not a huge one. It's 216 by 171 so it's not huge I thought that was so pretty that's called M Woods 1759 and it's from Milady's Needle which I had never heard of before but they're based in Phoenix I believe and um, they have a website which is where is it? Miladiesneedle.com. They have some really pretty patterns. Check them out. And then I bought, some, oh, when I was in New Jersey, I bought some smalls. And this is a needle case isn't that cute look at that with the kitty and it came with the it came with the kitty button too which was it's actually not a button it's a needle minder i bought this from oops to drop something charting creations I'm going to have to start a new, another new coverage next year, I think. I don't know which one yet. And then I bought these at Needleworkers Delight. A little tiny, little tiny. This is the frames that they go in. Little tiny. I'm really thinking about trying to figure out how to make these... Look at the little squirrel. Isn't he cute? Make these needle minders. I'm going to have to think about that, but I think they would be awesome as needle minders. They're done on 40 count, one over one. And then, isn't he pretty? I broke down and bought the latest Mira. I'm not really into these, but this one really struck me. So I don't know when I'll do it. I don't know when I'll do any of these, but I love having them. And that's what makes me happy. So I don't apologize for my stash and no, and you shouldn't either. And then I, I did a little shopping online. Oh. Letitia 
enabled me for this one. I don't know that I'll ever do anything, but the lettering letters are gorgeous. Love them. And then I got on one of the Russian websites and they've got some gorgeous stuff. So I, and if you buy enough, the shipping is free, right? And they can't travel alone. What the kitty? He looks like my princess. And I bought a cardinal. Look at how this one is packaged up with the threads. Is this one? And I bought this little guy. I think he's an owl with antlers. <laughs> Because who doesn't need this? Really? I've been coveting this for months. So I finally broke down. It's all blacks and browns on black fabric. Man, oh man, I'm going to have to up my um, readers. That'll be interesting, but I love it. And it's... The fabric that comes with it is 16 count. It is, has 25 colors. I'm trying to see. Oh, it's only got it in centimeters. I don't know what the size is. I'd have to get it out, but. So that's what I've bought. I think I have enough to keep me busy for the time being. Don't you think? Yeah. So I'm going to let you go and get back to your Sundays and I'm going to go do some stitching, watch some football. I hope everybody's having a good day, good week. Take care of yourselves and just remember to love what you stitch and stitch what you love. I will see you soon, hopefully before four months have gone by. I will talk to you later. Bye.